covering two main topics with you guys. Um, and we'll sort of have a little Q&A session at the end. And the two main topics that we will be covering would be um, first understanding what your genitals are, what bits we're talking about. There should be, there, there is a PDF that I've sent. I don't know if you sent this after the session or if you already have it, but you know, you can always refer to that if you want to revise on everything we talked about. And how we're going to break it up is going to be in two sections, which is where first we'll talk about what the bits are, what you see on the genitals, because a lot of us don't know a lot about our genitals. And the second half will be talking about how we can take care of them. So what are the, say, five fundamental things you should do for taking care? Um, okay, so the PDF will be sent after. All right, yeah. So um, what are the five things you can do to take care of your genitals and keep them the healthiest that they can be? All right, so um, if you are sitting around family, I would recommend to sit by yourself because there's going to be some graphic genitalia <laughs> in five seconds. So this is your five second window in the while I switch my camera around. How do I do that? Huh. All right. All right, your five second window is ending in two seconds. Two, one, and here we go. So we're gonna start with a realistic looking model of what our external genitals look like because a lot of us really don't know. For example, um, is there a hand raising option by the way on this? Do we have a hand raising option? There is a hand, a hand raising option. All right, so how many of us know here that we have a separate hole where we pee from and a separate hole where we have sex from or where period blood comes out from? So I see one hand, two, three, couple of hands going up, 11, 12. And how many attendees do we have? 15, 16. We have 36 attendees as of now. So about 50% of the audience knows that um, we have a separate hole where we pee from and about 50% of the audience doesn't know that. So let me just clear that up for you guys. Um, we have a separate hole where we pee from. That, that hole is called the urethra or the pee hole. And below that lies your vaginal opening. These are two distinct things. And this is how when people use a tampon or a menstrual cup, they don't fill it up with pee and it doesn't get dirty with pee. So let's talk about what the external genitals are that we'll see. I'm gonna start bottom up, because that's your bottom, that's where you poop from. Um, on the top, everything you see on the outside, what we in common language call vaginal area, is actually your vulva. Now, the vagina is the thing on the inside. Even this is not the vagina. This on the inside is the vagina. So all of this is your vulva, which means you do not shave your vagina, you shave your vulva. Okay, I'm just trying to keep this a bit steady. My ring light broke like 15 minutes before this started. So trying to keep it as steady as possible. Let me know if it shakes too much. Okay, so everything that we see is the vulva. Hair tends to grow around here. This is the vulva. And if you part this, so these are your lips. Uh, we have two sets of lips. One is the outer set, which are called the bigger lips or the labia majora, and then the inner lips. Now, a lot of people feel very conscious about having longer inner lips. That's perfectly normal. And there's lots of variations in the way the vulva looks. This is just a practice model. That's why it has everything snipped off. Otherwise, it would get in the way of uh, practicing for us. So having pigmentation around this area is also perfectly normal. That happens um, as a result of puberty. And you know, having darker patterns on your inner thighs and generally having a darker vulval area is perfectly normal. Now, um, I'm gonna use one of the things you'll see a doctor use. This is called a speculum. You might see a metal version. We use a plastic version because it's transparent. So what they do is they just put it inside. Right now it's going inside the vagina. So all the way inside the vagina. And then you open it. I'm just gonna move it around here. And that donut shaped thing you see at the end, that's called your cervix. Um, to explain what the cervix is, I'm gonna sit down. So let's come back to that in a, in a second because I'm gonna need to use both of my hands for it. But basically, yeah. 
um, at the end, that round thing you see, that's the cervix. And all of the canal on the inside is the vagina. This is the vulva. Now I'm going to point out something really, really important that I feel like a lot of women should know about, but they do not know about it. And that is your clitoris. This small matar kadana thing over here, this is called your clitoris. And this is where it's orgasm central. Now, why I'm emphasizing so much on this is that when we have fetuses, that is when we have babies inside our mummies, tummies, um, the, the, the clitoris and the penis, they basically develop from the same tissue. So when we are fetuses, we all have the same blueprint. With certain hormones coming in, so some people develop as this and some people develop with the penis. If you develop with the clitoris, and if you had testosterone, this clitoris would grow to become a penis. So the, the female equivalent of a penis is not the vagina. The female equivalent of the penis is the clitoris. And this is why this is orgasm central. If you ever want to have an orgasm and you're struggling with it, because I know a lot of people do struggle with it because they keep thinking that doing this will do anything because that's what pornography tells us, although it doesn't do shit. I'm sorry for my language. Um, this is where everything works. It's kind of how I always tell people is that if you, you know, stroke a man's balls and you expect him to orgasm from there, it's not going to happen. That's why doing anything to the vagina is not going to get you to orgasm. It might in a few, in a small percentage of people, but largely this is where everything happens. Now I'm going to turn off my camera for just one second. And let's talk a little bit about the cervix, which is what I was referring to um, as the donut shaped thing at the end. Now, has anybody heard of the cervix? Are you aware of what it is? Do we have any hands going up for this? Mm. Whoops. And there we go. Okay, I see seven hands up for knowing what the cervix is. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so a couple of people have heard of the cervix. That's wonderful to hear. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of it, I'll just give you a very quick demonstration of what it is. This is your uterus. Now, for those of you who don't know what a uterus is, and a lot of people don't know what the uterus is, so there's nothing to feel ashamed about. The uterus is the balloon-like thing inside your tummy. It actually, it's inside your pelvis where the baby implants. And as the baby grows, the uterus grows, and it grows so big that pregnant people look pregnant. So this is the uterus. We're going to slice it open in half from the middle. And this is what it looks like on the inside. The baby sits here. And at the end of the uterus, you have something called the cervix. How I always describe it to people is that the cervix is, it's like a bouncer that's standing outside the very exclusive club that's the uterus. And it prevents anybody from entering inside. So it's like a protective rubber band almost. Another way of thinking of it is that you've um, entered a very posh private mansion and the, the driveway that's leading you all the way up to the gated community, um, the driveway or the corridor is your vagina because that's exactly what the vagina is. It's like a long corridor. Then there's the fancy gates, which is your cervix. And then there's a very fancy house, which is your uterus. Now, now that we understand the basic anatomy bits, we know what the uterus is, we know what the cervix is, we know what the vagina is, we know what the clitoris is, we know what the vulva is. Let's talk a little bit about what the health concerns are. And as you guys have questions uh, um, about this, please, please feel free to drop, uh, just you know, jot them down in the chat box and we can take them as we go, or we can also take them at the end, we'll see, depending on the frequency of questions coming in. So I'm referring to the uh, presentation that's going to go out to you to structure it so you guys remember better. Now, um, the most common question that comes up with taking care of your reproductive health or your genital health, does it help, does it do anything? Is it necessary to use this? Now, let's go back to what we talked about the vagina is separate and the vulva is separate. The thing you see on the outside is your vulva. Now, as long as whatever you're using, you're using on the vulva, it's all good. 
if you put anything inside the vagina that's a problem the vulva doesn't necessarily need a separate wash you can wash with plain water that's also perfectly fine you don't sorry you don't necessarily need to use some fancy wash you don't need to use lactic acid and all of that on since you see plain water is just fine and once you're done washing it you have to make sure you're not putting that water inside your vagina remember the vagina has an eye in it which means is the thing on the inside nothing goes inside the vagina except of course sex toys penises menstrual cups all of those things tampons but no cleaning product not even water nothing goes inside the vagina and after you're done rinsing and sort of washing everything you have to be careful of a couple of things now when you're rinsing and when you're washing yourself make sure you go between the lips these are the fleshy bits we see on the outside because a lot of um, dead tissue and oily secretion that can build up over there it's okay i mean it's not it's not a problem if you're seeing a little bit of it because it builds up every single day you just need to wash it away because if you keep it there that can become quite sticky and hard and it can get quite complicated and you might need to see a doctor and that's why if you don't take a shower and you put your face near your crotch you can smell yourself um just washing it with water is perfectly fine now coming to the next step which is why a lot of people feel worried about washing or cleaning which is discharge you will have 100% guaranteed seen this ad somewhere on instagram or some other place cure vaginal discharge get rid of white discharge forever all of this nonsense and here's what you need to remember is that discharge is normal there is absolutely nothing wrong with discharge discharge is a very very natural consequence of how your vagina keeps itself clean think of it like this when you do jhadu pocha in your house after you've done the pocha do you store the pocha water in your house forever or do you throw it away the vagina does the exact same thing vagina apne andar jhadu pocha marta hai aur jo poche ka pani hota hai usko fek deta hai that's what we see as discharge is the same thing as your nose when you having a cold your nose runs a little bit because it's keeping itself clean by putting all this discharge out so everything can be washed out discharge is perfectly normal there's nothing unhealthy about it now there are certain times when you need to be concerned about your discharge and these are times when there has been a very sudden very obvious change in your discharge for example um say you have itu sa discharge every day and suddenly it becomes itta sara or separately if you have itta sara discharge every day suddenly it becomes itu sa or so amount then if there is a sudden change in the color now some people do get very worried about brown discharge right before or right after their periods that's normal because that's just blood that's mixed with your discharge that's coming either before your period or at the end of your period don't worry about that but if you're seeing red discharge in the middle if you're seeing very weird colored discharge um you need to speak to your doctor now the normal variation or range for discharge how i always describe it to people is either it will look like malai or it will look like egg white kachcha egg white so the range is sort of like that it will be clear and transparent or it will go towards thick and sort of cream like both of these things are normal and there's also a range in between this where you you know if you start observing your discharge you'll see if you see something unreasonably different from this for example if it's green if it's yellow and i'm not talking about the discharge that is dried on your panty because that after being oxidized and being exposed to air wo to yellow ho hi jayega that's fine but if the discharge that's coming out of you is looking obviously yellow it's looking very weirdly gray then you need to speak to your doctor so we've talked about amount we've talked about color now let's talk about smell now all of our vulvas and vaginas have their own natural smell they are not meant to smell like a tropical island they're not meant to smell like a bouquet of roses or vagina smells like a vagina this is perfectly fine but that said if you're feeling an obviously very funky smell if you're feeling what we describe in medicine as a fishy smell if you're smelling what we describe in medicine as a metallic smell that hasn't been there before and suddenly changed and become that and you speak to your doctor this can be a sign of a ph imbalance now ph basically means how acidic or how basic your vagina is this is something in chemistry that we all don't need to get into too much but what we need to remember is your vagina has an acidic ph it's like it's like nimbu 
and why this acidic pH is important is because there's certain bacteria that live only at acidic pH. And these bacteria act as your personal army and they fight off everything that's bad. So if your pH is not acidic, that means all your good bacteria will die, which means infections will happen. They, there'll be nothing, you're, you're, it's like, you know, you drop a nuclear bomb on your own army and there'll be nobody left to defend your, your territory. And then everybody will start popping in and creating a ruckus. And that's exactly what happens when a fungal infection happens or when a vaginal, some other kind of vaginal infection happens. So now that we've uh, covered color, we've covered smell, we've slightly covered consistency also, we've covered amount. And the last point you need to take care of with discharge is, does it come with any other features? For example, does it come with, say, itchy? If it's extremely itchy, might be a sign of a fungal infection, see your doctor. If it comes with a burning or any kind of pain, you definitely need to see your doctor. If your discharge looks obviously different from what it's looked like, for example, if it suddenly starts looking like the he or panini, this is a sign of a fungal infection. It also usually comes with itching. And in our country, we already have such a hot and moist environment. And you know, it's, it's in hot and moist environment only that, sorry, funguses grow. So if you're, we, we anyway more predisposed to getting more fungal infections. Upar se hum to pharmacist ke par jate hain. Bhaiya kujli ho rahi hai. He will give an antibiotic. Must hum pass an antibiotic khayenge. Koi prescription nahi, koi checkup nahi. All of your good bacteria dies. Fungus comes and has a party inside your vagina. So because of these two reasons, we tend to have more fungal infections than other people. So make sure if there's anything separately, distinctly different with your discharge, you speak to your doctor. Now we've talked about everything to do with your vagina, how to clean it, which is what you don't do. You don't clean your vagina, it cleans itself. We've talked about your vulva, which is where how to clean it. You only wash it with water. And see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Is it okay to shave your vagina with a razor? Your vagina is the canal on the inside. Now I understand, I completely get what you're saying. But if you go to a doctor and you say, and you're having pain in your shoulder. You know, your, your doctor won't know where to look. So it's very important to understand your body parts and to call them the right things. You can't go to the doctor and be like, Mere jaw mein dar dar and the pain is actually inside your ear. So you can't shave your vagina because the vagina does not have hair on it. So I was just getting to the next point, which is about hair. So we've covered in genitals, we've covered about, why is this stuck? We've covered the vagina. They were talking about um, whether or not you wash it, which is that you don't wash it. The second thing is we've covered vulva, whether or not you wash it, you wash it with plain water. And the important point that I missed here is you should wear cotton panties. Now you understand everybody wants to feel sexy sometimes and you know you can wear a nice lace thong or whatever. You can wear some nylon panties every once in a while for special things. You can... Um, you can try a variety of things, but largely what you want to do is you want to buy cotton panties because cotton has loose fabric, it has loose fibers in between, which means it allows for air exchange. Synthetic fibers are like this. It's very difficult for air to flow in between this, which makes it very moist, which makes it very hot inside. And that's what we don't want. We want good air exchange. We want good air flow in here. So cotton panties are your best friend. And I know they can be sometimes boring. But you can even go for sort of mix, cotton mix, but make sure it has at least 60 to 70% cotton. 